just before we start, mate, getting into things, what is it? Congratulations, mate, your ninth league title. Eight. Is it eighth now? Eight, eight uh, Eighth league title. How's can it be? That's five. Six, mate. Six. Yeah, six. six. So, how's it feel? A bit strange, mate. Isn't it? Strange. Um, obviously, like, you know, you'd, you'd want to win it on the on the pitch and on and, and win it in normal circumstances as you know we have in the past but look it is what it is unfortunately you know it's out of our hands and out of everybody's hands and you know obviously to try to do it as uh, you know as far as possible um yeah and we've obviously you know we were top of the league and you know we're top of the league for for a reason um and look, obviously, look, it's great, you know, to get another medal and, and to win the league and obviously then to look towards, you know, another European campaign. So, you know, yeah. obviously delighted, you know, that, you know, that, that we've won. Um, it's been a long time. It's been a long wait. Yeah. It's, it's just, as you say, it just feels really strange because we're all sort of in our houses locked away when usually we would be celebrating together at the ground or after a game or something you know it just feels to be a bit more real then whenever you're celebrating together instead of like you know stuck in your own house I think, that's what makes it, I think that's what makes it you know different as well you know certainly last year we, we had a party and and we enjoyed ourselves and it was and it was brilliant but sort of now we've, we've been apart for what 15 odd weeks and obviously yeah. you know no party and, and everything else. So it is, it's just all those things. It's just very, very strange. Did you find it frustrating that it carried on for so long in terms of like, you know, the making a decision or did you understand the weight on it? You know, the way sort of the Scottish League or Rangers and Celtic, they were pretty definite in their decision, whereas we sort of left it that wee bit longer. I think sort of with, with, with the Scottish League, obviously, there's been accusations of wrongdoing and, and and everything else, and clubs felt hard done by, and and, and all that carry on them. But I think um, certainly in their case, that whether the season was finished, there was only going to be one winner anyway. It was always going to be Celtic that you know that were going to win. Um, obviously, it was the relegation issue as well and, and things like that. But can our to be honest with you, like you know, who would want to be in a full making, making the call and and, and making the decision? Um, what I probably would say, maybe in hindsight, that now for them they might have made that call earlier, um, because then we had this. I don't know what you want to call it. It was just this whole disaster of clubs coming up with these proposals and just. Yeah. It was just a complete other mess. Um, you know, people going to the media, um, going to social media and plashing it all across there and putting their opinions on and their proposals. And to me, it was just very, very unprofessional. Um, you know, discuss everything on their Zoom calls or whatever way they were meeting, discuss it, but don't plaster it across social media and, you know, and then... And, and, into the media outlets and I just thought that that's what was really really disappointing and, and, and really really unprofessional um, you know then from from this sort of 22 game proposal and whatever and you know with the season that, that, that Corey and have had that they weren't going to get a European place. Yeah, it's ridiculous, mate. Some, some of the stuff is ridiculous. Like absolutely, absolutely ludicrous. Um, and to be honest with you, you know, Colin McKenzie made you know got a wee bit of criticism, you know, for for, for the interview that he done that I that I had seen in the, in the Telegraph. But I could completely understand, you know, his frustration and his anger, um, because there's no doubt that. That Cole Rain deserved a European spot, um, and at the in, in, in my opinion, um, and I do feel that that it's 
very, very true that at the end of the day, the league was a two horse race. Um, you know, and as I say, for them not to, you know, maybe not to get a European place was just, was, was crazy. Um, so as I say, look, all the bickering and whatever else you want to call it was, was disappointing. Um, and I would say that if Niffle had made the call early, then we mightn't have had this whole situation and, and this tension between all the clubs. But I understand that they did wait, um, you know, for the guidelines to possibly change to see if there was an avenue for football to start back. Um, and, the, and I understand, you know, the board's um, idea in the sense of playing two games um, to, to try and make the league as fair as possible. Um, and, but look, that's easy for me to say. Um, other clubs, you know, maybe don't have the finances to, you know, to do that. So, yeah. But I understand yeah. that, that Niffle obviously wanted to try and finish the league as fair as possible. Um, and, and they obviously seen that as, you know, as the best way to do so. Um, so yeah, so I, I do get that, but I would imagine that that maybe Niffle might have, might have, might think sit back now and think, well, maybe we should have made the call earlier because then these clubs mightn't have created the tension that there is now. Um, and obviously, then we had all these proposals knocking about, and as I say, out in the public domain. Um, which to me was was on the professional from certain individuals. Yeah, I, I just think certainly after thirty one games, anyway, you know, you've over probably three quarters of the season played. I think that, that after thirty one games, I, I think that's a fair, fair sort of fair reflection on where you should be if yeah. we're depending you are in the league. Fair enough if it was that maybe after 15, 16 games, and then you know it could have been very different. But I think that thirty one games is definitely enough games to be played in terms yeah, and, and I think, of making a decision like and I think to be fair you know obviously yes I've been involved with Linfield for a long time and, and, and all those things but I think if you take that the Linfield hat off um, and to be honest I think that you know yes Corian, you know have had a fantastic season they've finished you know seventh or whatever it was last year or sixth um you know, didn't get Europe, but now that the season that they've had this year, they've been fantastic. So I think, um, yes, they would be happy to, to get back into Europe, but they could possibly feel what could have been or, or what might have been. Um, and that's yeah. completely, and that's completely um, understandable because I know if that was us in that situation, I would be feeling um, exactly, you know, exactly the same. Um, but as I but I think you know certainly from ourselves' point of view that we were always playing catch up throughout the whole season, um, and I think that we were starting to hit top form at the right time. Yeah, I agree. Um, so just just basically moving on in your your career, if we go the whole way back, muggers to probably your early stages at at St Andrews, at a boys' club under and um, that was mainly run by Joe Kincaid. How did First of all, was that your first boys club, and how did you how did you sort of end up at, at St Andrews? I am um, basically um, I don't know if you remember Chris, but um, Joe used to run like a what do you want to call it like a a skill center or whatever, and he used to have it at the Shankle Leisure Center. Yeah. Um, in the yeah. hall, Chrissy. So I went there a few times, um, and back back then it was. It was all there was none of this, you know, playing, you know, mini soccer for for clubs like it is nowadays. Um, the opportunities that the kids have nowadays that you know to train with the team and, and to play matches. But back then, whenever I was growing up, it was all about playing for the BB. Um, yeah, there was, there was no real sort of youth academy. No, either, no there wasn't, and that's what I'm saying. You know, the the the, the pinnacle for you as a kid, um, was was playing for the BB really. Yeah. Um, Again, you know, there would have been down, down in Bangor, right where I am, there was, you know, scouts and, and, and stuff like that. Um, so I started off in the BB, um, third Bangor BB, and we had a really, really good team. Um, and was we, we were doing very, very well. And as I say, we 
I would have went on a, a I can't remember what night it was. It might have been a Friday night. We would have went to the, the, this sort of schools centre that, that Joe would have run. Um, this would have been before that you'd have been able to to, to play in the league and 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 the, the form a team. Um, so I say I was playing for the BB, and um, then I was playing from a primary school team in a tournament, and Raymond Alexander from Hollywood Boys asked me to go and you know, play, play there. And I did, um, I done that cause I hadn't really heard, my dad hadn't heard anything else, you know, from Joe, there was no mobile phones back then. It was yeah. just, you know, <laughs> it was your landline, um, showing my age. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah. And actually Joe phoned my dad one night and, um, my dad had just said that, that had already been, you know, been playing for Hollywood and stuff. And, um, so that was fine. So stayed there and then went on to St. Andrews whenever I was, I think it was maybe 13, 12, 13, Chrissy. Um, yeah. And look back then, it was St. Andrews, Lisburn Youth, Dungoyne. You know, they were the they were the top teams back then. Chrissy, as you know yourself, mate. And um, yeah. So yeah, so we Lisburn League is, was again the the top league in the country. There was no national league or anything like that. And um, I just learned so much from Joe and. From Harry Larkin and, and Billy McDonald, who are two main coaches, and obviously you know yourself, Joe used to touch base with you on a training night, and yeah. he was just he was just Joe mesmerizing, was really, really like really, really he was brilliant. He was sort I of just, uh, straight down the middle, wasn't he? Yeah, I just think that um, it, it was a terrible waste um, to football in the country, if you want to call it, that um, obviously whenever St. Andrew stopped, that that was him. He didn't do anything else because I think certainly with the likes of maybe Linfield and stuff, who he did have a really good relationship with, that I think he would have been a fantastic asset. Um, yeah, I agree. Definitely. Certainly, you know, in the academy and stuff. And I just, he was just sort of, uh, certainly from, from all the guys at St. Andrews, you know, he was just he held in such high regard and, um, he done just so much for for all of us, really. Um, and the yeah, amount yeah, of if you look at sort of the over the period of like a ten year sort of age gap, you know, the amount of players that have either went on and played in the Irish League or had careers across the water is is unbelievable. Remember, we used to have them oh, St Andrews end the season prize game. We used to bring the like yeah. and stuff back. Uh, and you know, I think that I think Chrissy that I think Northern Ireland football has a lot to thank Joe for. Um, you know, I, you know, me and you and along with, with other boys, you know, that, that certainly played at Linfield as well, you know, we all still speak very fondly of Joe and, um, as I say, still hold him in such high regard and, you know, he, he done so much for us and, and made us, not even just the footballers we are, but sort of the, the person and the people that we are now, uh, you know, as well. Um, yeah. He instilled so much into us and um, along with obviously the other coaches that we had, um, and I think it was just one of the best times of of my um, you know life. You know, obviously playing there. And I think if you think about it, Chrissy, that you know the career that that the both of us have had at Limfield. You know, at Limfield, you know, you have to be playing eight, nine out of ten. You know, near enough every week. Um, yeah. You always have a target on your back, and everyone wants to beat you. Um, all those things, and I think that. <clears throat> the the schooling that we got at St Andrews um, certainly prepared us for that because again St Andrews was this big boys club that to the game everyone wanted to debate and you know the again you had that target on your back even from a young age and I think mentally um, that that prepared you very very well you know for for moving on and and your career um, with you going the Ipswich and and other places and and me just you know obviously being you know, at Linfield and stuff, I think that that, that was a, a massive schooling and a massive help. Yeah, I agree, mate. 100%. That's a really good point, actually. And he wasn't... There was times where he could have been really hard on you as well, you know, mm -hmm. whenever you needed. He was that type of guy, but you knew that he was doing it because he wanted the best for you or there was something that yeah. he'd seen that he wanted to drag out of you. You know, who, who was all in your age group, Muggers? Was Daryl for dice and stuff in your age group? No, Daryl was... No, Daryl... Daryl left. There was the whole. Do you remember the whole? Um, 
My dad was meant to go and sign for me. He was young, wasn't he? And then he went and signed for me. Do you remember there was a whole age group change, Chrissy? Yeah. So I think so. Do I think Daryl actually went to Lisburn Youth then? Yeah. I think, um, Chrissy, but I had on my team there was Paul McDowell. That's right. Yeah. Then I had obviously Ribs's brother, Onions. Onions, Ribs and Onions. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because you did. You always had sort of like yeah, went up. And, you know, some boys went up and played up here. I remember yeah. Craig Cathcart coming to play up here. Yeah. And then it would have been the likes of maybe me, Ribsy and Carvel then going up to play in Dallas for Dice's age group. So you sort yeah. of went up and down a little bit. Yeah. But again, stood you in good stead for you know, being... I absolutely. And I remember, you know, when um, we got to stay twice, you know, wanted to do a bit of extra training and stuff. So I would have went up to, up with Davy McLinden's team and flip they had the team they had was was crazy. We Jim was playing, Albert Watson. Uh, Steve Davis, um, Chris Brunt as well. No, Chris Brunt would have been. Brunt, he was a year above, but David McLennan's team was was brilliant. Um, and I went to the dream with Emma nights, and it was just. I always remember the, you know, coming off the pitch and always being wrecked because the tempo and the pace was frightening. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, as again, you know, playing with you know playing a year up and playing with players, you know, like that. Um, it was great. It was brilliant. Yeah. I remember I had Cargill on a few weeks ago and he told me that the first two people that come up to him was Ribsy and Johnny Black and asked him what <laughs> asked him what team he supported. <laughs> asked him what team he supported. But that was a good thing as well about Joe that he had people from all over the country. I mean, there was people coming from like London, Derry, flipping oh, everything Iron Clubs and Catholic, you know, and it, it, it was brilliant. It brought everything. And I seen, you know, Sean Moore played for St Andrews. Um, I think Eddie Patterson, some Mark played as well. You know, there was a lot of boys yeah. there. And what what was good about it was, you know, Chrissy, like it was in the heart of, you know, the very top of the shankle, in the heart of Highfield, near enough. Yeah. You know, but and back in those days, you know, obviously the troubles were, were quite active um, and you know Joe was bringing these these kids you know us in and parents no issues um, never any issues between no. any players and never nothing like that there Chrissy and I think as I say that was a again a testament to Joe and you know a, a great example you know to, to Joe and obviously the rest of the coaches and stuff yeah 100% so Moving on, I actually never knew this till tonight. Um, how did the, how did the move to come about the Glen Torn? Did, were you back? Uh, did you have any trials or anything, or was it? Did you try any other Irish league clubs out, or you know how did everything come about then going to the Glens? Um, I uh, <clears throat> so we we had St Andrews then, and um, there was a whole debacle going on um, with the league, Chrissy, and um, our team weren't staying in the Lisburn League, but then we couldn't go and play in the South Belfast. So we basically yeah. had to just disband. You know, obviously we, we, we couldn't play anywhere. So we didn't, you know, that was us finished. So that was actually during a season. I think it was, would have been before Christmas time um, or maybe January time. And so I needed to play football somewhere. Um, I was sort of involved in Northern Ireland setups, training and things. And then um, obviously I needed you know, competitive football, obviously to try and stay in the in the frame, you know, for that. Um so I actually had a few friends who um were playing at at Glen Torn at the time. So they said to me, look, you know, you need to play football, you know, would you be interested in, in, in coming? So went, um really enjoyed it. We went to the Foil Cup and um, they asked me to go there, enjoyed it. And um I just felt comfortable and enjoyed the surroundings, enjoyed the guys that were taking the team and enjoyed the, the you know, the, the teammates. And um, I decided to stay. Um, and as I say, I enjoyed, enjoyed my years there. Um, we played, played for the 16s and I was playing for the 18s. And excuse me, there was actually a time that I wasn't particularly getting on the youth team. And um right. 
just had to be patient and um, then go playing and it was then straight in the reserves, playing every week in the reserves. Um, we had a really, really good reserve team. Um, again, Jordy Bowden and Johnny Jamison took us and they were old school, Chrissy. Um, but and from, from me personally, looking back, um, it was what I needed. Um, and I had no issues with it. I loved it. Um, and, and I enjoyed their mentality um, of being winners and wanting to win um, and still in that in the me and the rest of the boys. Um, look, we wouldn't have had big numbers of training because, you know, a lot of the guys were in our reserve team were part of the first team squad. Um, so we wouldn't, but we always worked very, very hard. Um, always small side of games running. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jordy and Jamie were, they were hard, hard on us. Um, but as I say, I had no issues with that. Um, I, again, I was very lucky that um, they are moving on the Linfield that that prepared me um, in my mind and the mentality that, you know, they had me drilled, you know, like St. Andrews about winning um, and the same, you know, was at Glen Tornan. We uh, got to the final of Stealing Sons, Banger beat us. Um, and then we played actually Linfield in a double header. It was the semi final of the Stealing Sons and the final of the George Wilson. Uh-huh. After the second game, Chrissy, then that's whenever Linfield had a conversation with me just before I went up the tunnel. Yeah. Uh, I'd known Willie McCune, um for years, Chrissy, before that, who obviously still is scouting for us at Linfield. And um, he, he, he knew that I was a Linfield supporter and stuff. And and then he had sort of asked me would I be interested and I says look I don't know what's going to happen here at the end of the season so yeah I would certainly be interested yeah so that was fun. so I had a few conversations after that Chrissy and um, Glen Avon had spoken to Glen Avon and I spoke to Crusaders Crusaders had actually just been relegated at that time who was the Glen's manager then Muggers yeah uh, Roy Coyle had he had any conversations with you about trying trying to keep um, it I actually, I played two first team appearances, come off the bench twice once in the County Antrim Shield against Glee. Uh, Glee Rangers and Neary City in the league, mate. Yeah, so came all the way to Neary, I came off the bench as well. Um, and as I say, look, again, Glenn Torn then had a, a fantastic team. I would have been up and down now and again, training with them, and so competitive. Um, quality was brilliant, the players. Certainly to me as a young boy. Um who stuck, who stuck out for you then? Um Chris Walker would have trade would have actually um played with us a lot. Um yeah. and would then would then boys have been demanding and hard on the young boys? Oh, I, oh I, Chris Walker was lethal. Um crazy. But again yeah, <laughs> that's the way it was back then and uh, again I and I would probably be sort of like that now, Chrissy, with, with some of our boys. And sometimes it might be too hard, and I get that. But I just want to win. Um, but the guys then, <clears throat> actually, Michael O'Neill was there whenever I was there and played in the reserves with, with me a couple of times. Um, I don't know what was going on with him and Roy Coyle, um, but he played a few times. And gentleman, really good guy. And as I say, I didn't have any issues with any of the players then. They were great, great fantastic guys and but as it came to the end of the season and I had a chat with Roy Coyle and I just felt in myself Chrissy that there was never maybe going to get a chance you know a proper chance if it was you know going to be good enough that whereas whenever I met you know certainly David Jeffrey that, that David said to me you know you'll get a chance here as long as you show that the quality and you show that you're good enough is what I've seen in, in the past few while then you know you'll get a chance yeah. here can you remember and what was, Roy Coyle said to you that he you know whenever you're sort of having a conversation with the manager yeah. you're just not too sure whether you well, know well that's I sort of got that vibe um, Chrissy you know like if Glenn Torn if Roy if, if, if Glenn Torn had said to me you know 
there's there's thirty pound a week there for you. Um, you know, you you're going to get a chance here as long as you keep progressing. You keep you know working hard and whatever. You know, we'll we'll give you a chance. You know, I would have stayed. Um, because yeah. I say that yes, I was supported Limfield and, and and had done all my life, but I enjoyed the environment that was in. I was used to the environment that was in. Um. But as I say, it didn't really, it, it, it just didn't feel right, to be honest with you. Um, you know yourself, Chrissy, you sort of have a conversation, you sort of get a vibe. Um, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you get a vibe and you know, sort of, mm, not sure if I feel wanted here or not, or, or whatever. Um, and then and I just felt where the big man comes and speaks to you and McLaughlin, yeah, well, and it's a whole different, it's a whole different ball game, isn't it? Yeah, and I just sort of felt mm, that, that that wasn't maybe going to happen. And look, I played Horn at a brilliant team that time, Chrissy. So who was I to say that I deserved to play? And that's what not what I was wanting or looking. I was just looking, you know, to to be, you know, if I was progressing and training hard as I had been doing. And, and Jordy and Jamie would have pushed me all the time and, you know, would have said, you know, you get a chance and whatever. But... It just didn't feel as if it would have, that it was going to come. Um, and then they signed for Linfield. And if I'm being totally honest with you, like I signed for Linfield and I was getting 50 quid a week. Uh -huh. um, and it was never the money, Chrissy. So what I'm saying is, you know, I went to Linfield for 50 quid a week and I could have went to Crusaders in Glenavon um, for more. Yeah. But I sort of had in my head, well, I'll go to Linfield, I'll give it my best shot, give it a good crack, and if it doesn't happen, then sure, I'll move on to somewhere else, at least to know I give it a go. Yeah. And to be fair, you know, I went in and done really well pre season, Chrissy, and was in the first game, first game of the season. Remember your debut? Yeah, we played back then, Chrissy, if you can remember, we used to play the League Cup first. Yeah, it always started first. Yeah, so we actually played Glen Avon. Um played played that came off the bench and back then, Christy, there was only three subs. Yeah. So there was. So um played then I actually hurt my medial then whenever I came off the bench. I remember I hit the bar and stuff and but as I say I was doing well in pre season. Um well I must have been because as I say I was in the squad and and came off the bench and, and things and played a game in Europe against Hamstad, um, which was a great experience for me. Um, and as I say, David was very true to his word, and um, then the rest is history. <laughs> what is it, 589 appearances later, mate? <coughs> yeah, I think, yeah, possibly, yeah. <laughs> um, well, did he play you wide early, like early on in your yeah. short career did you sort of play yeah. wide and then gradually after wide then you yeah, would have played a mixture of mixture of center mid and, and right mid Chrissy and um would he like to do that didn't he sort of almost yeah. I remember sort of later on he used to have like Philly Laurie out there and Philly yeah. Laurie a center midfielder he, he sort of yeah. basically and, and, the, and, and the beefer you know them feel you know won the clean sweep that year with playing that um playing bigger horn Mackers, Galdi and, and Big Mike say, Big Tim. Yeah. You know, so you look it worked. Um and as I say, look, I played there and to be honest with you, look obviously I would have prepared preferred to play centre mid, but I was delighted at a young boy to be getting an opportunity um to play. Um certainly at Limfield and again with with a squad that was filled with so much quality. Um me being a, a 19 year old um kid um learning my trade with guys like that um was was special and as i say um again um it stood me in very good stead and obviously they taught me principles and taught me a lot about the game and um that i've been able to carry on and and pass on the others hopefully well, was Davy again? Was Davy and uh, sort of the senior key players were again? Were they hard on the young boys? Were they demanding? Um, yeah, it would have been. Yeah, Mackers was Mackers was a massive, massive moan like 
but <laughs> even worse but, than you. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, but you know what? Again, he you just it, wanted. You need yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. He wanted. He just wanted everyone around him to, to 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 be the best and want to be the best, and and it drove you on. And 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 as I say, look, we were all you know all the boys you know then were. You know, it demanded a lot off each other, and um, look, it, it was a great formula because it worked. Definitely, I, I agree with mean, you. Can't be successful without it. You know, people are going to fall out. There's going to be disagreements, but you know, if you want to be successful and you want to win, I think that things like that are going to happen. No, and look, you know, we had a there was a, enough senior players there that just you know run the changing room and um and and we're just. You know, they knew the game and knew what was expected of them, knew what was expected of each other. And as I say, it was a great learning curve for me. Um, something that that I would certainly be, th- you know, I'm certainly thankful for. You know, to be obviously to to, to be playing with with all the guys and um, obviously still friendly with them all now. And then majority, you know, still keep in touch with with the majority of them. Yeah. In terms of a big Davy, Davy Jeffrey, can you explain? I want you to sort of go into a little bit of detail for those who don't know and sort of those maybe watching or, or players that haven't played under him. Just what, first of all, what's his his biggest qualities, um, you know, as a manager, not even a manager, sort of as a, a person as well in terms of, you know, arm around your shoulder, but also getting the best out of a, out of a bunch of maybe, you know, 18, 20 players and sort of keeping them all on side as well because what it, what I remember he's very good at was you know sometimes when you're not playing you can have like a division in the squad whereas you know everyone I remember on them used to be united together whether you were playing or whether you weren't playing he had that sort of key and that you know that really good quality of keeping everyone together no matter what I think um, I think Chrissy like People think that um, people who don't know Davy, you know, and have never worked under him or, or, or been under him, that people, you know, even I speak, you know, people ask me about him or whatever. People think that he's scary. Um, yeah. yeah, he has that sort of demeanor about him. Yes, whenever he. You know, you weren't doing well, and whenever you see, he would have rant and raved and, and, and went crazy. Um, but he was very fair. Um, very fair in the sense, you know, Chrissy, where you know, you chat with him and give you his reasons and whatever. But you know, if you had any issues, you know, he was good, you know, he'd speak to you. And I just thought that, yes, he was hard, but he was very fair. and not a big softy, but he carry you know he carries that demeanor of you know people think whoa, you know big Davy you know would scare him whatever and yes that to a certain degree yes that's f- true but I just thought that I obviously thoroughly enjoyed and have so much to be thankful for you know to, to have worked under him but I thought he was very very fair you know you know if you needed the odd night off training for for a genuine reason you know there was. That's no problem. That's fine. You know, you do that. No problem. You know, I thought he was very, very fair. And even, you know, David now, you know, that Hilly now, you know, is the same, you know, he, very fair that way. Um, but David was just, you'd run through a brick wall. David, have you run through a brick wall, you know, with his team talks and, you know, motivating you um, and getting you, you know, ready, prepared and ready for the match, you know, a lot of detail what I went into the games and with the preparation. Um, training was, you know, was, was was tough as you know, Chrissy. You know, running and, and, and other things. And I remember the time that we were. I think it was like April time, Chrissy. And I, you probably remember. And I think, you know, we used to do these runs, and it was like April, March time, March or April time, which was the end of the season, and we were going for the league and. Near sure we're a good bit ahead, and we turned up this night in training, and he run the absolute nuts off us. <laughs> and we're just standing, shouting, you know, 
if he's want to be winners, this is what you need to do. It's all about mental toughness and whatever else. And you know, we all stood and called them all the names to the day. But screaming at him. This is Dan. With the big uh, stopwatch around his neck. Yeah. Big fat controller. (laughs) And um, I always, you know, remember that night. Dark, it was dark night. And I remember him running this round at Midgley. I think I remember that, mate. I think I remember that there. Yeah, and I remember us running around and going, what's he doing this for? It's near the end of the season and blah, blah. We're not going to get any fitter. And But Davey knew we weren't going to get any fitter. He was just doing it for men mentally yeah um, and look at the time you're sort of thinking what the bloody hell is he doing this for yeah. but as you get older and you look back and you 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 know i always you know look back with with you know what david david would have done and methods and everything how could you know you, you couldn't argue with him but you know whenever i look back i go hmm, that's why i done that you know yeah. there's always a, sen- a sense of realization and it's true, you know, the older you get, you you do rationalise and you do sit back and you go, yeah, well, that's why we've done that and that's why we've done this and that's why we've done that. And as I say, he knew we weren't going to get any fitter, but it was just more mentally and, and to get us prepared um, for the tough end of the season. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Chrissy, like, you know, you know, sometimes managers at Linfield, you know, they don't get the credit they deserve because... Oh, you have all these resources, you have all this money and blah, 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 blah. But that's, you know, quite disrespectful to me, you know, to the to the hard work that that that, that Davy certainly put in over his, his, his time at Linfield. Um Davy worked incredibly hard. Um and at the end of the day, that's why we were successful under him because he was a damn good manager and he worked incredibly hard. Um, yeah. And he expected us to do exactly the same. And you know, Chrissy, you know, Davy, you know, dedicated his life to Linfield Football Club. And I think if you're going to be successful in, in any career, any way of life, that you know, you only get out of it what you put into it. Um, and as I say, that's why you know Davy brought a lot of success to Linfield and was successful as a manager. Yeah. And as I say, look, you know, yourself, Chrissy, working under him, um, he was a tough bugger. Um, would have shouted and bawled at you and whatever else, but he only wanted the response from you to perform, to help contribute to the team so that they would win. Um, and he wanted the best for you. Um, you know, David was very, very good at that. Um, you know, putting your arm around you at times and always giving yeah. you the hug and the kiss. And, it made you feel loved and, and, and wanted. Definitely. Um, what I was going to say, I never forget his pre-seasons, mate. Like the, usually the oh. first day back in pre-season, he had them, them 12-minute runs marked out. You had to do two of them. I think Dougie, like... 12, Dougie. 12. Well, it was like, it was eight laps in 12 minutes and I think the track was like 350 metres or something, Chrissy. And yeah. I remember we had to do eight laps in 12 minutes and then it was a four laps in six minutes. It was brutal, mate. And Dougie I standing in the middle. Yeah, standing in the middle of the cricket. Um uh, and balling with a stopwatch. I actually yeah. remember one of the times <laughs> not to get it. And it was just so happened that me and Jim Irvin, me and Jimbo were would always been running together. Um always seeing pace and whatever. And never forget the time where he was being sick, but he was still running while he was being sick. Never forget it. And I remember the time Dougie turning up and hadn't really done much over pre-season. And he was yeah, the front of the... day for two weeks or something, painting and everything. He back, and he back. back. The day before, and he turned um, up and he stinking of booze, and he was laughing at everything. Uh, just running everybody into the ground. <laughs> And I remember, as I say, running with wee Jim, me near being sick, Jim was being sick, and Dougie's just running, like, with a cigar out. I know. You used to annoy the life clear to me. Um, but, but no, I remember um, 
Remember Mark McAllister used to struggle like mad and in the last lap and a half, two, la- two laps, he used to sprint. <laughs> Him and then big angles, man. <laughs> angles on like knees. Uh, never forget it. He all used to, he was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, in terms of your Linfield career, mate, you know, over the certain amount of years you've been there, um, what was it, five, 589 appearances, mate? Um is there, a, is there a key sort of period of time or, you know, is there one moment that a highlight that sort of sticks out in your mind as the best? Um, from a personal point of view, Chrissy, I would say um, my first season there, I was injured a lot with my knee. I actually done my medial ligament a few times. Um and I didn't get any medals at the, the, the clean sweep year. Um, I ended up actually still playing 20 odd games that year. Uh-huh. Um, and for that, for my first season there, that the age I was at and the quality that we had, I feel if I hadn't have been injured that I would have got more games. Um, and I suppose my first season, I remember The disappointing thing for me then that first year was that I got man of the match in the semi-final of the Irish Cup against Bangor, but I ended up not making the final squad, which was really, really gut-wrenching. Um, that injury, muggers? No, I was fit and everything then. It just didn't get selected. Um, Did you and get that was an explanation? Really... Pardon? Did you get an explanation? No, not really. Um, at the time, it was really, really hard to take to be honest with you um, again 19 and thought that I might have got an opportunity I was doing well because I actually played that semi-final and then played Shelbourne in the Satanta um, we beat Shelbourne um, and then I played the, the game where we won the league away to Armagh and, but I remember okay, I was coming back from injury then Christian I remember we played away to Limbafati and I was poor, really, really poor. Really, I wasn't fit. Um, and I knew then that I needed to do something. Um, otherwise, I would find myself in trouble, really. And I, and I never forget it. It's it's still with me now. Um, and I remember going to myself, I need to do something about this. Um, and I did. And as I say, then I, I got me opportunities then. Um, and as I say, I got a taste in, as I say, in the Irish Cup semi-final, winning the league down at Armagh, the crowd that was there and everything. And um, But I think in hindsight, looking back now, as I say, I'm older now, um, I understand decisions and I look back and, and I can understand them and you know, I accept their, you know, the decisions being made. Um, that that, um, that made it for me. Um, it sort of drove me on and made me more determined uh, yeah, just going back, Muggers, the way you said you needed something to go away and work on. What what was actually the details of that there? What did what just, was I wasn't fit, Chrissy. I was playing right midfield and I was blown out of my backside. Yeah, basically. Um, and look, I could could use the excuse of um, I uh, wasn't. That's an absolute trek. Yeah, oh, I know, and, and you know, working under the under Davy as a right winger, you know, we all, you know, yourself, we always used to call it the graveyard shift. Ah, uh, he knew that himself because he expected it to be at your own back post, but then up at the opposition's back post. Yeah. Uh, but look, <laughs> I had no issues for that. But as I say, um, I could use the excuse of you know it wasn't long back from injury and whatever. But no, I knew then that. I needed to do something, uh, and I did. And as I say, I, I worked hard off, you know, in, in my own in my own time, um, outside of the training ground and on the training ground. And you know yourself, Chrissy. You know, whenever you're injured at Linfield, you you're very, very fortunate, very lucky that, that Terry Hayes is there and Paul's there to to do your rehab. Um, and I always find that whenever I was injured, that working under Terry and Paul for a period of time, that I would have no issues with with my fitness whenever I joined. The squad again because they might the work that Terry and, and, and Paul do with you and you know that yourself. Yeah, um, very lucky. Mate. To say that that um, that time, Chrissy. Then after that first season, as I say, that made me really 
hungry and determined in the next season then I played in the Irish Cup final I got man of the match um, I played 50 odd games um, so I think you know that as I say that was disappointing that period of time come the end of the first season but then as I say that drove me on and made me more determined and then we can go on Chrissy to the European adventure there Um yeah. I think it's hard to, you know, you were involved yourself. I think it was hard to, to top, to be honest with you. Um, sort of being so close to being able to achieve your dream, if you want to call it. That yeah, I mean, it was just... Yeah, for, certainly for me, you know, I was, um, at the time I was 33, uh, captain in Linfield, the team that I supported and possibly playing in the Europa League. Um yeah. I don't even think like you sort of knew how close. No, exactly, and you know sometimes you sort of do you get an opportunity to sit back and think about it, and, and, and I do. I sort of go, whoa, imagine. I know. Um, the thing that again, out for me, mate, is actually over there. I think it was one nil to them, mate, and we were into the, like the last. I think it was fifteen minutes, and I've lined up to take a throw in, and big staffs just came up for the long throw, and we were actually yes, that's the right. Pressure by then, you can see like the, the crowd and stuff were getting nervy. And about literally half a second, I sort of stepped back through the ball, and literally your center half pushed staffs over, and the ref right. blew the whistle, mate. And I thought he was going to give a penalty, but obviously, I hadn't threw the if I had threw that ball in half yeah. a second quicker, you know, and they're, yeah. the, they're the margins, aren't they? They are, and as I say, look, that's that's hard to. to to top that, Chrissy, and then obviously, look, we've been on a barren spell of not winning leagues or, or, or being successful and underachieving and just being very, very poor for Linfield standards. And um, obviously, the time, you know, we we wanted it at solitude um, to make the the catch up Crusaders and the 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 gap that was there, and for us to catch up and the end up winning it. Um, yeah, that for personally for me was a was brilliant in the sense that you know we hadn't won the league for so long and you sort of thought was it ever going to come again um and it did and as i say you know look, there's so many things chrissy to be honest with you that that you know obviously have been lucky enough to be involved in and and, and you know achieved and all those things um and very very fortunate as i say but i think um certainly that that european adventure was just it was crazy. Um, yeah, definitely. In terms of, of Big Davy going, um, obviously next in was then um, Warren Feeney, mate. Um, yeah. Did you not play as much as much as much as you liked with with Warren? And did he ever sort of did he ever explain his reasons why, or was it a difficult was it a difficult period for you? It was, Chrissy, and um, to be honest with you. Um, I was never one to to be a bad apple or, or, or anything like that. Um, you know me, I'm a determined bugger. Um, yeah. yeah. Again, I always wanted to, to, to prove him wrong. Um, always worked hard in training. Even whenever I wasn't selected on a Saturday, I still trained before the matches to make sure that if I was ever called upon, that I was in the best possible shape and condition to to contribute in some sort of way. Yeah. Um, I did have a conversation um, w- with him um, to ask why I wasn't playing. Um, I don't think... I got an honest response, um, but I accepted it. That was fine. Um, had you started off in the team under him, and then if yeah. you what happened in between? In yeah, terms? no, it just changed. Um, wasn't getting playing at times and whatever. And to be honest with you, Chrissy, it sort of got the stage where I was wondering, would I have to move on? Yeah, um, he's been there for so long, you know. <laughs> Look, 
at the end of the day, every manager is different and football is all about opinions and I get that. Um, I would have just liked to have been, <clears throat> been, been honest with, um, been told the truth. Um, and, and me and me and Warren never fell out, never hit a crossword or, or, or anything like that. And as I say, look, Warren had his reasons, I'm sure, and but but what they were, I don't know. Um, but I but whenever I did play, you know, I tried my best to contribute as I always do and have done. Um, because at the end of the day, I'm playing for Linfield, and, and that's where I've always wanted to be. And and you know, you have to perform if you want to, you know, to stay at the club. Um. And as I say, the games that I did, I, I tried my best to, to contribute. Um, and as I say, look, I would say if Warren might have stayed on longer, Chrissy, I don't know if I would have um, been at Linfield now. Yeah, just um, shooting at football is a... That's probably how, you know... Um, probably how serious the situation um, was sort of getting, Chrissy. I was really, really frustrated and stuff and um look Glenn Ferguson was managing Balamin at the time and look Glenn obviously looked after me Spike looked after me whenever he was at Linfield and used to travel together and stuff and still is a good friend and um he had sort of said look I'm not sort of trying to pull you away from Linfield or anything but it was just you know if that he would be interested, you know, if, if things, you know, weren't going to be working out. Um, and as I say, look, it was, it was getting to a stage where I was considering whether I would be at Limfy long term. Um, was it under, different? Under, was it meant mentally in terms of like, you know, under Davy and when he first came to the club, basically you'd been involved in the first, you know, the first team and making yeah. appearances consistently for six, seven, eight years. So how difficult was that period? You know, where you're not used to not playing? Look, it was difficult, Chrissy, but I always, um, you know, I, I like to think that I have um, a strong mindset. Um, I like to think that with the school that I've had over the years and with the things that I've experienced, I'm, I like to think I'm mentally tough. Um, and I think as a footballer that you know me, I'm not I'm not an arrogant or big headed person or whatever, but I always have con I always had confidence in my own head that of me you know, that I, of my own ability. Yeah. Um, I always still believed in myself. Um and as I say, look, but that's not to say it wasn't tough because it was because look, you know yourself, every footballer wants to be playing every minute of every game. Um and it was just difficult, you know, in the sense, Chrissy, that you were maybe turning up some weeks and knowing that oh I'm a playing or I'm not playing you turn up thinking I think I will play today you're not playing you know it's just that uncertainty um, which was quite unsettling um, but as I say I continued to, to work hard and training and um, to set a good example and to to support the boys and to support the team and, um, and, and as I say I always did that and um but look, I have no, no, um, no hard feelings um, towards Warren or anything. And as I say, look, football is all about opinions. And, yeah, that means, you know, and as I say, every manager is different. Every manager has different ideas and want to do things different ways. And that's completely fine. Um, and as I say, I had no issues with that whatsoever. And I have no... Um, ill feeling or anything towards um, Warren Feeney. What I would say is that Andy Todd was obviously in, in with him, and I thought Andy Todd was was very very good, Chrissy. Um, a lot of the boy, a lot of the boys say that, don't they? Very um very deep thinker. Um, thought a lot about the sessions and how how to get um how to get enough out of us and um. I really, really liked his ideas, and, uh, and I really, really liked them, Toddy. And to be honest with you, I was disappointed whenever, whenever he went, Chrissy, because um, I thought he had, a, he had a lot to offer. Uh, yeah. And obviously, with the career he had, he had, he had plenty to offer. And um, what's he doing now? What's Toddy doing now? I don't know, Chrissy. 
He was with Blackpool there under under Gary. He used to manage Blackburn. Oh, Gary Bowyer, was it? Mm. Gary Bowyer. Um, Toddy was working under him at Blackpool and stuff. Um, yeah. Somebody oh, who had a, a great career playing in the Premier League. So. And, and as I say, he was a... Uh, he was a he uh, was, was a breath of fresh air. I really liked him. And as I say, um, again... Him and Warren, as I say, might have had different ideas towards me. I don't, I don't know what Toddy's feeling was, you know, but towards me or as a player or whatever. But I thought that I really, really enjoyed his training, and I thought it was very, very good. I really did. We are the night of the Christmas party where Toddy, <laughs> where Todd was it Toddy and Clickers? You, know <laughs> you know me, answer with a smile, don't you? <laughs> Boys still talking about it. What happened, mate? Can you remember? No, I wasn't there. I, I think Warren was. Um, I think Warren was going to do. Had you something. could beat that day or something? Or had a bad result that day on the Saturday? It was a Christmas do that night. I can't remember what the result was or what it was. Chrissy and um, Warren was away. I think he was away to Swansea or somewhere to do his pro license and. Um, I, uh, I obviously was kicking off like, and um, it was Warren then phoned me, and just we we had a conversation like, and um, he just said that he would deal with it whenever he got home. But the two boys were a wee bit, I think, disrespectful or whatever, and um, I think Toddy warned him, but they didn't take heed, and then it was. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Toy, I would like to get hit by Toddy, look. I'll hear, ask, uh, ask Gary Breen as well. <laughs> <laughs> what was that in the town somewhere? Flip me. Breen, you'd be able to tell you all about that. <laughs> anyway, mate, moving on, right? Your testimony on here. Yeah. How did that sort of, for you personally, yourself and your, you know, your, your family and everything, how proud... You know, were they and, and yourself for that? There, basically, was it difficult to plan that whilst playing and everything going on? Um, see, to be honest with you, Chrissy, a lot of people would have said to me that it would be a tough year trying to juggle everything, and you know, with still playing and 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 obviously then with the testimonial. But I never found it that way, to be honest with you. Um, and I suppose that. I suppose, mate, that that's down to the guys that I had on my committee. Yeah. Um, Who did you have on there? So I had Roy McGovern, the chairman now. Roy was was, was the secretary. Um, Stephen Dixon was on it. Um, John Aiken from York Star. Andy Nelson was from York Star. Paul Boyle, who's from First South Belfast, from the Barrington. And I had Ivan Ogborn. You know, Ivan and Ivan would go to all the European games and stuff. Yeah. Just all, to be honest with you, Chrissy, all fanatical, hardworking, good, good, just Limfield people. Um, yeah. And, like, they worked their backsides off for me. Um, and as I say, I think that's why I didn't see it as, well, didn't find it as hard work is what people warned me of. Um, Roy McGovern was just so organized brilliant and from the first meeting Chrissy we had it was right who we're going to get for the friendly and we always wanted Rangers to be honest with you um whether at the time whenever we said that I don't know whether we all sort of thought that it would be realistic or not Chrissy to be honest with you um but yeah but just leading up to that time you know, you have your dinner, um, your golf day. And to be honest with you, Chris, I was very overwhelmed. And you know yourself, you know, supporters clubs really support them field. And, you know, they, they, they do put on good good dues and stuff. And I was overwhelmed with the generosity from from all of them. Um, that was crazy, to be honest with you. Um, I knew that obviously Limfield fans and supporters clubs you know support the players and 
and whatever else. But this went over and beyond um, my expectations or just what I even expected or thought, um, yeah. how generous they were. Um, and as I say, I'll be eternally, eternally grateful for, you know, for that. Um, and obviously we're leading up to the date for sort of coming up for the match, Chrissy, and um, correspond regularly with Rangers, um, Roy and, and the guys at Rangers. And me and Roy actually went to uh, the Rangers end of season gala dinner. Um, sort of we were invited to go along, me and him went along for to sort of get a conversation, you know, about the friendly and stuff. And the chairman at the time of Rangers was a, was a man called John Gilligan. Um, conversation with him in the night and said if, you know, if it's possible, well, certainly there'll be no issues and stuff. And I think the big issue for for, for Linfield and, and for Rangers, Chrissy, was a date. Yeah. Um, that was the big issue all along, to be honest with you. Rangers always agreed that if there was an opportunity that you know, that they would certainly come over, there would be no problem. Um, and then obviously this international game came up that obviously Roy was involved in and, and Paul Smith was obviously involved with 21s and, and youth internet, whatever. Um, and that made it possible. And um, I don't think, Chrissy that any of us would have expected that Rangers would have brought over you know? full starting 11, full squad over. Um, and obviously in preparation for the game that they played Celtic in yeah. and um, I think to be honest with you Chrissy, like we only had myself and the, and the committee only had roughly it was like three weeks Chrissy, to, to plan it um, and we ended up with I think there was a, just over nine and a half thousand there yeah some turned out and I think, and I think to be honest with you Chrissy, that if we had a longer time frame of announcing the date of the match, that um, we would have got a lot more there, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, but I think it was just testament to Rangers, you know, fans, and then obviously, you know, my committee that that we were able to get everything organised and set up in time um, for it. Um, and, you know, for me to to have my testimonial against Rangers, who again I've supported. Um, and obviously I've been at Limfield for, for so long that um, I think that was the icing on the cake, to be honest with you. Yeah, brilliant. I, meant, I remember Nico Cranchard just running the bike, oh. absolutely running the show, mate. And, he's, and I never... He pinged one in the top corner from about 35 yards. And if you remember, Chrissy... Um, I was laughing at it. <laughs> if you remember Chrissy um, O'Halloran Michael O'Halloran came on and he yeah. was rapid and it always I could never understand because he really really impressed me along with Kenny Miller as well but O'Halloran never reached the heights as what I thought he would have at Rangers he was brilliant that day wasn't he mate oh, I mean, that day. I think he got a really hard time oh and I just thought where, where, where have you been you know why haven't you been doing I know obviously you'd People can say, well, sure, it was only against Linfield or whatever, but which is a fair enough comment. But just that day, he had so much quality and he was so fast, so sharp. He was, man. He was probably one of the best days in that. He was probably one of the best players on that day. Yeah. Um, I just couldn't understand how he didn't sort of do well at, at Rangers. Yeah. One person we have to talk about at Linfield, mate, the big man, Gary Eccles. <laughs> Start off, yeah, by the remember the time he went to the, was it Faroe Islands or just the previous European trip and he came and he, he dyed his beard completely black. And the boys the boys tried to, the way the Faroe Islands are the Faroe Islands are you know full of sheep and the boys tried are to, sheep noises for about four days. <laughs> tried, tried, tried to deny it that he that he dyed his beard, tried to deny it. One night it's the grey and all, and the next night it's black. I know, mate. I never forget it. Just come in this pure black beard. You know, just the whole. You actually thought you actually thought he rubbed the polish on it. Was <laughs> Have, Have you any other mad stories about him? Because obviously you've been there for 
so long and stuff. But like we both know the way Gary is or whatever. But, you know, obviously people who have never played at Linfield and you know from I think York, like you know, I think Chris, it's, it's funny. Man. People, people that don't know Gary, you know, might get the wrong impression of him. Um, but look, you know yourself, Chris. We all wind him up and say he's lazy or whatever else, but. He does so many things behind the scenes at Linfield. Um, there'd be a lot of things that wouldn't function at Linfield without him, Chrissy. You know, you know that yeah. yourself. Um, but fuck, Gary's become a like us all, Chrissy. You know, he's become a good friend. And um, but I remember one time we were in Slovenia. Was it? no Slovakia. I think it was Slovakia. We're playing a team called NK Gorica, I think it was, and we were there, we were we were there for five days, and it was roasting, roasting. It was in the thirties every day, and every morning we used to come down, and Big Davy and Gary were sitting out the front of the hotel with their tops off. <laughs> <laughs> And I remember, never forget it, but, but I remember one of the nights, one of the day, yes, it was dinner time. We're all queuing up as you do, you know, to get your food. And Gary standing there with his two hands in the plate and Macker's pulled his trunks down around his ankles. <laughs> everything <laughs> hanging, everything, everything hanging. And he went crazy shouting to Big Davy, that's £50 fine for him and everything. And I remember... After the European games, we all used to sit together and all the staff and the players and have a few drinks and whatever. And I remember in this hotel, they had a glass door. And, <laughs> and you know yourself, whenever Big Gary has a few drinks, he's not very good with his feet. Well, late, he's, not, he's not best with his feet, even whenever he's sober, but drunk is even worse. Well, he fell head first into the glass door. And typed it. Never forget it. Everyone just heard a thud, and Big Gary was on the ground. <laughs> and never forget. It. We were going down to play Institute, and we used to go. <laughs> we used to go to the white. We used to go to the White Horse in Jumaho, and um, really nice, nice wee hotel, a nice place, and. All sitting down, all oh, everyone sat down, and you know yourself, Gary comes over with a sheet, making sure everyone knows what they've ordered. Tech. Yes, you tech, yep. Chris, Casement, you're having that. Jamie, or Fatso, you're having that, and whatever else. And I never forget, big Gary went to sit down in a chair, and it broke. Broke, and I remember us all turning round, and big guy was lying back in the legs were in the air. Well, I've never seen anything like. That. Well, the boy. Well, there's a few rumours that go about now that Gary got a claim out of it. Money that man's got. Oh dear, so many good good stories. Like um, but I just I never forget that. I remember just that that previous European sort of trip where we had like three trips in two weeks or something like that. We had the Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan trip. You had the Faroe Islands, which we were stuck in because of the, the fog, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like you had Kirk Miller and Jordan Stewart who basically just don't stop me. You know, the likes of me and you, the, all the old ones, we just like a bit of peace and quiet now and again. But they, and I don't know how Gary stuck how oh. Gary stuck, but he stuck me for the two or three days, like with hardly any sleep. <laughs> All I heard me for about three days ringing in my ears was bah! <laughs> just because of that beer. <laughs> oh, there he actually. Kirk Miller, Kirk Miller and Jordan Stewart had that on repeat, mate, for about three days, constant. And then the torch, and he get about Pat and all. Yeah. You know, but as you say, mate, a great guy. You know, does a lot behind yeah, You know, as I say, yeah, but, you know, obviously people wouldn't see. You know the work that Big Gary does, and, and how organised he is, and the OCD that he has. Um, yeah, as I say, he's like, and Gary knows Limfield. Stingy with the isn't he? 
yeah, you know, he knows Linfield in and inside out and knows the way things should be done. And as I say, he's a, he's a you know, we all banter him and whatever, but he's a fantastic asset to have. Yeah. One thing I have to ask you about, probably in terms of, of this season anyway, um, the Queen's defeat made in the Irish Cup. Obviously, your was it Ben played your brother as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could, could, I was on the bench that game. Could you? And I really never really noticed. Another way, sometimes before a game, you can sort of notice a bit of sloppiness or something. But is there anything that you picked up on that day where you just thought that maybe there was a chance of a shock or whatever? Or you know, even Ben and talking to Ben, yeah. did, they, did they fancy themselves? I, Christy, um, because obviously Ben played there. Um, I would have watched Queens quite a bit and would have knew a lot about them. Um, and to be honest with you, Chrissy, I obviously never said to, to anybody or, or whatever, but I knew that they were going to be a threat. Yeah. Um, I knew Peter Thompson, the takes him, is actually um, very similar, to, probably to... To, to David even now you know we work a lot on, on team shape um, Chrissy and, and obviously it, it's it's helped us over the years I know that sometimes players don't like it or it's not ideal or, or, or whatever but Peter Thompson's very structured that way um, you know sets his team up and, and, and has a structure and they work on their, on their shape and, and defensive shape and, and all those things and I knew that they would have been well drilled. Um, and though I didn't think that there was any complacency or anything, but I was concerned because I did think that it was a potential banana skin. Yeah. Um, and obviously whenever they got the, you know, the, the first goal, then reality did head home. I thought it was going to be a difficult game, but I actually thought, Chrissy, to be honest with you, that whenever we got the equaliser, that I thought, you know, we will go on and win here. Um, I didn't think that I didn't think that we were going to lose the game, put it that way. Um, but again, one one's a dangerous game, and a mistake can cost you a set piece. Mm-hmm. And again, look, was it a penalty? No, in my opinion, and. That people might say, you only saying that because you play for Linfield. But after seeing it again, you know, you, will, you, you know that, you know, the referee and whenever we went down to, to Lorne a couple of weeks after, the referee and the fourth official that was there that night and the referee who was doing the Queen's game actually said it wasn't a penalty. Yeah. Um, look, the the linesman give it and that's that's fair enough. Um what sort of disappoints me is that, you know, those other officials said that it wasn't, but he still says it was. You know, it's fair enough, you know, that's just sometimes it's just sort of like, yeah, I made a mistake, you know, hands up and whatever. Um but look, did we play well enough on the day? To win, possibly not, um, and probably not, and that's why we got beat, and that's why we found ourselves under a lot of pressure. And I think Chrissy that Queen showed the quality that they have whenever the the game that they had against Glen Torn after it in the next round that they took yeah. Glen Torn all the, all the way. Um, and again, look, if we had, had played them at Windsor, it might have been a different story. But that's what cup football is all about. And that's all those games to be honest with you, Chrissy, over the years, and you know yourself that they do worry they worry me anyway. Um yeah, yeah. it is you're in a no win situation, you know, you're expected to win. So if you win four or five, well sure you were yeah, expected yeah. to win, you know what I mean? Or if you struggle to win one nil, oh it's not good enough and whatever. So, you know, no matter what level you're at, you know, you're in a no win situation in games like that and um there is a wee bit of extra pressure, but look, it was probably one of my lowest that I've ever experienced and the lowest of, 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 of my career. And you know yourself, you're in the changing room afterwards. And um, it was 
It was a tough one to take. It was, um, it was wasn't it? It was. It was really and to be honest, we, it's one of them ones, Chrissy, where I just wanted to hide. I didn't want to leave the house. Um, but then, look, we followed up. <laughs> Strangely enough, we went to solitude and we beat Clevenpool. You know, I think I think what the manager said yeah. after, because myself including me, I thought we were all going to go in. I thought the manager was going to go absolutely mental me you know flipping crazy but he actually what i thought he said that day was he was very very calm and i thought he got it spot on me he warned us that obviously it wasn't good enough but he was very calm and you know basically saying the next next week or the next couple of weeks was was going to be the deciding factor and the other go under or we come together and you know, we go on when the you know, go on yeah. champions in the league are because yeah, I think that he knew if first of all there's a big game then as you say coming up against Cliftonville. If you go on and lose that, then suddenly it's it's yeah. going to go very, very quickly, mate. You know, so <laughs> but I think you know what he said after the game was a hundred percent spot on. You know, on the reaction I think as media, well. up in the papers like. I think as well that um I think he knew how low we all were. Yeah. I think from our reactions and the changing room, um, I think he knew that we were all at our lowest point. Um, and I don't think, as you say, ranting and raving or whatever was going to help or do any good, even though... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how he didn't do it, man. I don't know yeah, how he didn't do it. Yeah, as you say, like, even though it warranted a good ball again and bottles or whatever you want like whatever it is and um, even though it warranted that them um, you know and I do I remember as clear as day what, what I said and stuff and, and what other people said and you know I think that certainly helped us all you know moving forward um, and as I say I think you know this season obviously yes we we've ended up as as, as league champions um, and that's the goal at the start of the year and, and, and every year uh, but I think from our own standards Chrissy you know we've always been playing catch up the success in Europe has sort of hindered us a wee bit you yeah. know our success hindered us you know and obviously always playing catch up and playing so many games in a short space of time and and whatever and you know, we possibly haven't reached the heights is what I think we're capable of um, and what we have been capable of in certain games and the, the, some of the performance that we have put in, we haven't been consistent in performing at that high standard. Um, but we were four points clear and better goal difference as well with maybe not reaching the, the uh, heights is what we, we, we know we're, we, we are capable of. Um and look, as I say, we all would have loved to have finished the <clears throat> the, the season and, and obviously played the full season and, and, and hopefully won it. Um, but look, that's how that, that was out of our hands. Unfortunately, the, the situation that, that we find ourselves in, obviously health and, and everything else is more important and helping the NHS out whatever way we can is, is the most important. And um Obviously, it's just been disappointing with the tension that, that's been created now. Yeah. Just going on to your international career, mate. I know that you, you made some appearances then for the under-21s. Um, was it Roy Miller you played under? Roy was a legend, mate. What oh. a guy. The one sideburn, one sideburn down here. <laughs> Roy, was, Roy was always, you know, people... Might have had mixed opinions and stuff, Chrissy, but you know, working under me, he was always very good, very yeah. good to all of us. Um, he was brilliant. He hated me, at he absolutely hated me for dribbling out with the ball from the back on the open. <laughs> and I actually, and oh, yeah. you know what, Chrissy, and God rest him, but Al McDonald was worked under Roy as well. Yeah. And Al brilliant. was fantastic. brilliant, absolutely fantastic, and very, um. Very, from from what I remember working under him and stuff, him and Roy and stuff, and obviously Alan was heavily involved in the coaching and stuff. That it might sound strange, but it was simple but effective. Yeah. 
to see how long was. See, at the time, mate, see, at the time, this is just being young and naive, I never knew the career Alan McDonald had, mate. Right. I but, never knew. I just thought Alan McDonald was some yeah. guy that yeah. was just a coach. I never knew that he played, what was it, over yeah. 50 times for Northern Ireland, been in a World yeah. Cup. Keep Cap- the and all. In the Premier League. You know, I wish I had got more out of him when yeah. I was there in terms of talking to him and trying to, trying to get advice off him. But a gentleman and good crack, good sense of humour with all of us. And he treated us, obviously, you know, we're 19, 20, 21 and whatever, but he treated us all like adults. And yeah, I, I, I really, really liked him. And um, as I say, again, he showed his qualities, you know, by winning the league with Glenn Horn at the time. And, you know, he, he, had, he had a lot of knowledge about the game. And as I say, I was, it was really, really great to work under him and Roy. Yeah, and then your your international debut, mate. Was it a, an America trip in Turkey in two thousand and ten? Uh, yeah, I went to Connecticut and then went on to play Chile. Chrissy, Chile were going to the World Cup. Uh huh. Were they yeah, sort of just warm up games in for them? Yeah. Yeah. So I played, played Turkey and Connecticut, and then went on to Chile and played them. What can, what can you remember of that there? Did you know, and how long did you know that you were going for? Obviously, you, were, you must have been in good form then for Olympic back then. I actually had been, Chrissy, and then I got injured, mate, and um, had just sort of came back from injury, and, and it was after one of the cup finals, Chrissy, and it was funny because I was actually um, coming up the tunnel, and um, Nigel Worthington was coming down, and he had a conversation with me just to say that that I was he was wanting me to go on the trip um, and would I you know did I feel that I was fit and stuff and I said absolutely yeah um, so yeah so um, got the opportunity um, and obviously you know yourself you, you bite your hand off for an opportunity like that and um it was to be honest with you, Chrissy, it was a group of guys, you know, a lot of boys from uh, the Irish League, a lot of younger boys from sort of England and Scotland, and then we had Stephen Craig and uh, Michael McGovern was playing and Gareth McCauley were playing as well. Um Josh Gin- McGuinness was there as well. He also was around the little Corey Evans. Um I'm trying to think of boys that are there now. Ram McGovern, McGivs was yeah. there. Wee Ribsey, Kevin Branoff was there, Roy Patterson. So look, Chrissy was made up of a lot of boys, maybe from around the Irish League and then experienced boys. Um, and to be honest with you, did, on, in any normal circumstances, Chrissy would have got an opportunity? No. Yeah. <laughs> because end of season, long trip, Obviously, the, the senior boys and established boys needed a rest, needed a break. Um, and obviously, we were called upon. And look here, I'm under no illusions that, as I say, if it was a normal squad or whatever, I wouldn't have got a look in. Um, Nobody can take that away from you, though. No, well, that's exactly, and that's what I'm saying. You know, no one can, can take that away from me. But what I'm saying is, I'm not going to sit and say, oh, this, that, there, and the other, because as I say, uh, I'm under no illusions to 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 know that and and admit that. Yeah. Um, but today I played um, both ninety minutes in the games. Um, against Eight or any any top so, boys for yeah, Turkey had a Turkey had a full team out. Um, Chrissy Morris, I played against Demre in midfield. Chase them around. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you cast as well, wasn't it? Yeah, who yeah, I support as well. Um, Alexis Sanchez played for Chile. I can't remember, Chrissy. Can't remember, mate. Because they, I think they had two games arranged. Yeah. Uh, but Tunchai was playing as well for for Turkey. Player. Um, and then the goalkeeper. Oh, the big goalkeeper. Black stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Barcelona. Yeah. Uh, uh, Rak- 
Rodgers, I can't remember yeah. maybe, but I remember Chris, they, they had a good team. Chrissy, they, they had a good team. Um, and I remember the heat, the heat was absolute, was oh, mental. Probably one of the hottest I've, I've played in, mate. We were really um, one about his tomato face. <laughs> oh, me and him, it was hectic. And I, I never forget, mate, after the match, Andy Massey was actually the doctor at the time. Uh-huh. And obviously Terry was, Terry was there. And I remember coming off the pitch and I said to Terry, I says, Terry, I'm shaking here, I'm shivering and I'm very lightheaded. Yeah. And I, I ended up becoming a wee bit dizzy and them two had to walk me off. Slipping. It was just from, from the pure heat. Yeah. Um, Chrissy and whatever. And then, as I say, went on the chilly again, played the, the full 90 there. And I have to say, um, Nigel Warrington and his assistant was Glenn Snowden. Yes, but uh, he used to be at West Ham. Yes, and he was it. They played for Leeds and stuff. He was at Leeds and stuff. I think under yeah. Simon Grayson and stuff. Glenn Snowden was brilliant, super. Nigel Warrington was super with me. Um, really, really good, and it said to me that he liked what he had seen and whatever else. And as I say, I played both full nineties. Um. Yeah. Some experience for you, mate. Oh, I, absolutely. And, and I knew, Christy, to be honest with you, that after those two games that I probably would never have experienced it again. So I um, I wanted to make sure that I enjoyed the experience um, and really sucked it all in and embraced it, really, because uh, I knew that I'd probably not get this opportunity again. Because... Um, I obviously had aspirations at the time. I was still young enough, you know, if you know, maybe going across the water, but I knew that if I didn't get anything like that, then you know, I wasn't gonna be a regular in the Northern Ireland team. So I knew as I say that that this was my only opportunity really and it was probably never gonna happen again. And the same under no illusions to to admit that like. Yeah. Did you have any nights out? Yeah, and Chile would yes, Chile we did. It was brilliant. Good good crack, really good crack. Any rock? Uh, I guess. Oh, I guess. Oh. <laughs> oh, what a good! You know yourself. Some boys get a few drinks in them, and they're, they're a different person. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, we had, a, we had a good time, and as I say, that lives long in the memory. Happy days, brilliant mate. Um, did you trials then in America as well? Two thousand eleven. Did you go across? Yeah, yeah, yeah I um, <clears throat> I had um family friends who live in Portland, still do, and um, so Linfield were stopping the whole full-time programme, um, Chrissy, and uh, they, they had offered me, a, you know, a three-year contract, and it was never about the money, because to be honest with you, the money that they were offering part-time, I was delighted with and was, was happy with, um, if it was different circumstances, I would have signed it in a heartbeat. But they knew that I wanted to try and maybe continue on full time career and and all those things and I was completely open and transparent, you know, about that and, and they knew that. Um and as I said to you, I told them that it was never about, you know, the money and, and as I say, we were they knew that we both parties, you know, we all were in agreement about that. And um but as I say, I the family that I have in Portland, they were friendly with um sort of an agent and he was able to set me up to, to go over and, and a few trials with a few teams and stuff, Chrissy. Um, if I'm being honest, uh, I know I might be in the best of shape, you know, the best of times, but um, this was the off season for us. Um, looking back, I we used to go on the end of season trips, Chrissy, as you know, we all used to go together. Um, and maybe... Pardon? Magaluf. I well that's this this year that's where that's where we were. <laughs> and um came back and to be honest with you, I came back and I trained for a number of weeks um in the gym, doing a lot of running, a lot of cardio. Uh but probably wasn't in the 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 best possible shape to go to Columbus Crew where I was going. Yeah. Uh, and whenever you get out there and you see the setup and, and you see the 
and you see that the athletes that that they are um because that's what that's what they are technically they whenever i went there they mightn't have been as good as the british europeans if you want to call it but they were Monster. they were athletes. yeah they were fit um then i went on to portland trained there um john spencer was the manager then at portland timbers mm. um great time just to as i say i was i was then stayed in portland with the family friends was there for a month and it was great just to get dropped off and then walk down to the stadium where they trained on the 4g um in the sunshine um yeah. it was brilliant and then finished off chrissy in orlando um they weren't Orlando weren't MLS at the time. Their manager was Adrian Heath. He used to play for Everton and stuff. Um, he was a great guy, great, great guy, and um, I was really, really well looked after there. To be honest with you, by the owner actually, a guy called Phil Rollins, who was heavily to do with Stoke City. Um, so I was really well looked after by them, and um, actually played against Bolton in a pre-season friendly. And I have uh, the last time that Gary Cahill played for Bolton, I got a shirt. That was that match. They wanted me to actually stay, Chrissy, in for another period, for another week, because they were playing Newcastle the next weekend. And they, they all knew that I supported Newcastle and stuff, and they wanted me to stay then to play that. But I got the stage where time was running out with Linfield, and I had to come back and, and, and sign, because if I hadn't then... You know, I wouldn't have maybe had anything. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> Orlando sort of, <clears throat> they were coming to the end of their season and they had said to me about coming back out and getting something sorted and things. But to me, it was too risky, Chrissy, because it wasn't sort of concrete enough in, 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 in my eyes anyway. Um, but that, the heat, and I'm, I'll never forget the first, the first day I went, it was, I was staying with, with two guys. Um, one was, from Chicago and the other one was from Trinidad in Tobago and then um, we went to training this day and we used to train really early in the morning because it was so warm yeah and to be honest with you I was just making a making a clown out of myself like <laughs> seriously honestly, oh it was crazy honestly I remember getting there and we're training and playing and I couldn't move and <laughs> and I knew, I knew myself the guys were looking and going Who's this clumpet? <laughs> who, who is this guy? Um, but honestly, it was just the heat. Yeah. And then <clears throat> once I got into the third session, I just started to get fitter and fitter and fitter. And was in really, really, really good shape and everything. And I remember, remember about a week or so into the training, because I was there for about two weeks. And I remember a week or so into the training, the two guys. Um, Charlie and, and Justin, who I was staying with, they said to me, Jimmy, do you know what? The first couple of days you were here, we were thought, this guy's crap. <laughs> what you do? Yeah. And then they said, but now, since you've got fitter because of the heat that we know why you know, you're here and whatever. Um, and I remember coming back, Chrissy, and playing then. And I remember our first league game it was away to Glenavon. Um, wow. But I remember, I remember Chrissy for about the first, I would say, first couple of two, three months in the league. And this isn't the sound arrogant or overconfident or whatever you want to call it. But I remember I was finding it not easy, but it was because I was so fit. Yeah. Because I was playing, training in Orlando every day in that humidity uh -huh. and the heat Chrissy that I was just I just felt so so fit yeah and that's why I was performing at such a high level at that time yeah and not to say I'm not saying that it was easy but I just find the whole fitness thing playing in the matches that the fit, fitness wise and everything it just, it wasn't a challenge, the fitness, I was just able to run all day. Yeah. And then and that, I never, that brings, what? 
that breeds confidence as well, mate. They're like, there's that, not that's what I'm saying. You know, whenever you're really, really super fit, you don't think about anything else. No, definitely. everything just seems to fall into place. Yeah, you know, you feel confident. You feel sharp. You feel everything. Everything's great. And I knew that. Whenever the, I'll never forget that first match with Glen Avon. I actually remember it was raining a wee bit and stuff, and I actually remember going to myself, flip. I've never felt this fit before. Nathan Hanley scored that, didn't he? I played that game. I remember. It was raining the first game of the season. I scored it. I scored in that game as well, Chris. Um as well. I'm near sure yeah, I did. Because I the thing about it was, Chrissy, I had actually missed. We actually played Barry Borisov in the yeah, European Cup. Yeah. I didn't play it because I was in America I was in Orlando. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, I didn't have a full pre-season with Linfield playing matches or anything. I came back from there, trained with Linfield, and then Davey put me straight in and started me. Yeah. I just, as I say, I just, you know yourself, whenever you feel super, super fit, everything just falls into place. Yeah. Um, and you've, you know, you feel confident in everything. and. I never forget that period of time because I remember then I went and I played, played the Stillery and stuff as well, Chrissy, at night time. Mm -hmm. I never forget it. I just I felt so sharp and so fit. And again, it was just because I was training full time, if you want to call it, Chrissy, for yeah for the maybe two months, um, and then especially in Orlando, whenever I was training there in that heat, I think. The full time training, obviously, in the other places was good, but whenever I got to Orlando, it took me to the next level because of the heat. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Moving on, mate. Um, just before we sort of wrap up, um, appreciate your time. You know how long you've been. On. I've kept you on a wee bit longer than. No, sorry, you mate. You're fine. Um, just in, in terms of your f future plans, obviously, you, you know you would like to play. You know, as long as you possibly can. You know, given health and, and injuries and stuff like that. Um, do you see yourself going on and and playing maybe for another three, four, five years? Um, and then in terms of after, you know, after that, in terms of coaching and management, what 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 would you like to see your yourself doing at the end goal? Um, at this moment in time, Chris, obviously we've been in lockdown and stuff, mate, and um, I've been training really hard Um, I feel as if I'm in really really good shape I, th I feel as if I'm at a really good level of fitness Um, and I feel at 34 now I think I have to be Um, obviously if I want to continue to look we all want to play for as long as possible Um, hopefully in, in, in my career that that I will in an ideal world, Chrissy, I would like to finish my career at Linfield, um, yeah. and you know, and, and continue to, to play, you know, at a high standard and at a high level with with Linfield. Um, but as I say, I will only be able to continue to do that as if I perform and, and look after myself. And I think now, if I want to do that, then I have to work on my fitness and, and look after myself. Um, I do train hard anyway, you know, on training nights and stuff. And you know yourself, uh, I'm probably one of the biggest moaners going, and one of the biggest moaners about. Um, but that's just because I want to sort of win, want to be the best, and hopefully everyone else will, will, will come, come. We we go with each other, you know, to that level. Um, I want to achieve that, and um, so yeah, so. I feel really, really good, feel fit, and as long as I touch wood, I stay injury-free, then I would hope to be able to, you know, to do that, mate. But with regards to after football, um, I really enjoy coaching. Um, I enjoy that. Um, and that's something that that I would, you know, like to do. Um, whether that's with Limfield, um, I don't know, at, 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 uh, in some sort of capacity um, or whether it's at another club I don't know yeah. all I can say I do want to coach and stay involved in the game that way um, managing 
a sit in the fence. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I um, think it's important to get that experience of maybe coaching first. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, uh, we'll see how you settle into that and yeah. be around sort of, you know. Yeah, absolutely. That um, first. It is, it is, it is. It is a big difference, Chris, you know yourself, you know, from um, playing and coaching. Um, it is different. And as I say, I do enjoy coaching um, and it would be something I would like to do. Managing, I don't know. But at the end of the day, you know, for just for, for example, if, if Limfield come knocking to you and say, Will you be your manager? Yeah. You'd find it hard to turn it down, wouldn't you, mate? Yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, you know, um, look, and that's, and at the end of the day, you know, that's maybe not just with Limfield, Chrissy, that's just, you know, with, with any club. Um, because, look, any manager's job at, in, uh, in our league or at, at any level, um, it's hard, it's hard bloody work. Um, it's twenty four seven. You're no longer um, like we do now, Chrissy. You finish training and, and, and you go home. Yeah, I know. At, a lot of the times, you know, you're near enough just looking after yourself, Chrissy, and making sure you're right and ready for training, ready, you know, good condition for matches and whatever. But managing is it's twenty four seven. Um, so as I say, and, and that, you know, look, Glenfield is an intense environment, as you know, Chrissy, but, you know, and then every other club, it's still, you know, manager of the club, you're still 24-7. They still expect you to, to do well. Um, so I don't know, but as I say, look, coaching's the, coaching would be the, 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 the priority anyway after, after playing and hopefully... That's maybe not for a, for another few years yet, anyway. A few years left in yet, mate. A few years hopefully. left in big size yet. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, um, as I say, look, like yourself, Chrissy, you continue to enjoy it. You continue to 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 work hard, and you continue to to want to play. Um, and as I say, hopefully that continues for for for, for a number of years yet, anyway. Yeah, I think just sharing your sort of experience there in terms of, um, you know, when you do maybe reach 30 and, and start getting into maybe your early 30s, I think you learn to, you know, number one, look at, you, you know, that you have to look after yourself. That oh, maybe 100%. Back. And you sort of start to watch everything and start to watch, you know, how you... Feel. You start to look at the game, Chrissy, in a different, in a different perspective, don't you? Hundred percent, mate. Everything, you know. Even when they were, I texted you earlier off air and as well, you know, just about obviously the league and stuff like that. And things get sweeter the older you get because you know that your time's running out, mate. Or you're just one injury yeah. away from, you know. Whereas if you get an injury, maybe whenever you're sort of early twenties, mid twenties, you know, you can recover from that there. But you know, early thirties, mate, or mid thirties, you get in a bad injury. It's like. You know what? It's very, very difficult to come back on. So I think no, I, you learn to appreciate everything a wee bit more. Oh, de definitely. And you know, Chrissy, look, people have said to you in the past, I'm sure, and, and people have said to me that whenever you do get to your thirty odd or past thirty, that you used to, you do start to sip, you you take a step back and you analyze everything in a different way yeah. than what you did previously. Um, and everything you've mentioned, that's that's what you analyse and that's what you think about. You know, because certainly probably now with me at 34, reality starting to set in in the sense that how long have I got left? Um, I think that's probably why, Chrissy, to be honest with you, like <laughs> at times that obviously people don't, don't see it, you guys see it, that it's sort of... <laughs> probably over the past few years I've got a wee bit more emotional yeah um, because you know that probably your time is you know running out and that's you know, 100% you obviously know. You know, the, the car bag time you know was crying like a wee baby on the pitch um, yeah. and, uh, and other times um, but that's because you're playing the game that you love and you know that 
you don't know when well it's definitely going to be shorter now that yeah that, you know that you are going to have to stop playing the game that that you have done for such a long time and the game that you've that you've loved and as I say now I, I sort of as I say that's why you know since lockdown you know I've been working hard that to prepare myself obviously for for the season ahead to hopefully prolong my career and and hopefully be able to play it at a high standard. Yeah. Well, listen, mate, top man for coming on. Really, really appreciate no, it. No, thanks very much for asking me. Thank yeah. you. Cheers to another league medal. <laughs> um, thanks for yeah. you know, That's brilliant. And uh, what, what else have you been doing, mate? Sort of, uh, I think these are back next Thursday night, aren't you? So I'm speaking to you. Next Thursday, mate, yeah. Um, I say, just been, just, doing the coaching Chrissy now and just looking after the kids. Claire's working full time from home. So just yeah. sort of trying to juggle in life, you know, with the kids and with Claire's work and then sort of trying to fit in a wee bit of coaching and stuff. Good stuff, mate. Well listen, top man muggers, thank you for coming on us, mate. Yes. Doing the week, mate. Thanks a lot, okay. all right. Thank you, mate. Thanks. Take care, mate. See you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.